Hey gang, welcome back. Dr. Brown here. We've got another exciting instructional video, this time about chemical buffering systems. And to demonstrate the effects of chemical buffers, we're going to be using the bicarbonate buffering system. So let's jump right to it. Here it is in all its majesty. Behold the glory that is the bicarbonate buffering system. Over here on the left, we have carbonic acid, which can in aqueous solution dissociate into hydrogen ions and the bicarbonate ion. So this is a weak acid. So in solution, you're generally going to have lots of carbonic acid and you'll probably also have some bicarbonate. And in our bodies, which have a pH of 7.4, we'll have a little bit of hydrogen ions in there as well. Now, these numbers do not accurately rep represent the actual ratio of these different molecules in our blood plasma. In fact, normally in plasma, the bicarbonate ion in orange here is usually about a thousand times more concentrated than hydrogen ions. But obviously that would make for a very busy video. So right now we're going to say that the numbers we see on our screen represent homeostatic values. They are not equal to homeostatic values, but they represent them. So for us, homeostasis is going to mean six carbonic acid molecules, five bicarbonate ions, but most importantly, we're talking about pH homeostasis, and pH is all about them hydrogens. So for us, the most important thing to remember is that homeostasis equals two hydrogen ions. Well, what if we add some hydrogen ions. What if we have somehow elevated the hydrogen ion concentration of our blood, dropping our pH? This is bad, right? We just said homeostasis is two hydrogen ions, and now we have four. Whatever shall we do? Well, thankfully, we have the bicarbonate ion that lives on this side of the equation. So bicarbonate will scoot over here merge with that hydrogen ion to make a new carbonic acid molecule. Once again, bicarbonate comes in, merges with a hydrogen ion, and creates carbonic acid. Now we've changed the number of bicarbonates and carbon, carbonic acids on our screen, but look at the hydrogen ions. That's the most important thing. We've gone back to having two. So if you add hydrogen ions to your solution, this equation is going to shift to the left. You're going to get more H2CO3 in order to keep that hydrogen ion concentration steady. Let's look at the flip side of that coin. So let's clear our screen and add back our homeostatic values. So there's our carbonic acid, there's our bicarbonate, and here's our hydrogen ions. But wait, who's that coming in from the bottom right? It's a parietal cell. Oh no, what do parietal cells do? Well, they remove hydrogen ions from the plasma to put it in gastric juice. So now, thanks to this parietal cell, we should have two hydrogen ions, but we only have one. Thankfully, we have our good buddy, the bicarbonate buffering system, ready to step in. So this carbonic acid molecule is going to split, releasing an H plus and an HCO3 minus. So now, although we've changed the number of bicarbonate ions, the most important thing is we're back to having two hydrogen ions. That's the most important thing. So really, that's it. That's how buffering systems work. If you have too many hydrogen ions, then the bicarbonate side of the equation will slurp them up and form carbonic acid. If you don't have enough hydrogen ions, like we saw here, then the carbonic acid is going to split. It's going to dissociate into the hydrogen ions and the bicarbonate ion. Well, that's it. That's all I've got for you today. So I hope that helped. Have a great day and we'll talk to you later.